Welcome back to another session of Ask Feld, where, with the help of the amazing podcaster, Martin Griffin, uh, he's going to read the uh, questions that you have all been uh, kind enough to send us on Twitter using the Ask Feld hashtag or through emails or other means. And if you can't get enough of Martin's amazing voice that you'll hear right now, you know, you can hear him every other Monday at the podcast here on Public Knowledge. So, Martin, lay it on me. At Whitespaces D asks, why do the broadcasters get to sell back unused spectrum that isn't even theirs to begin with? There are two answers to this. If you're a broadcaster, the answer is, well, broadcasters have done a lot to improve the spectrum over the years, and we've spent millions and billions on equipment and invested goodwill and all of this, yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you actually read the statute, the statute's very clear. It says, no one ever owns the Spectrum, even if you buy it at auction, and certainly not if you got it for free, and we can take it back for you at any time, provided we follow the proper procedures, which we're doing. So, why are we paying the broadcasters? Well, it's just easier. I mean, really, it's just easier. And... Yeah, maybe we could have gotten more money for the government, but you know what? It just works it out better this way. Broadcasters that want to continue to provide free broadcasting will continue to do so. Broadcasters who are looking to cash out will be able to cash out. Wireless carriers that really want this to provide mobile broadband uh, will be able to get uh, uh, new vital low band spectrum for mobile broadband. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's what politics is all about. You know, maybe it's not the ultimate win for us, but you know, it's enough of a win for the public to justify making it a win for everybody uh, for the broadcasters as well. At Paul Overbite asks, "Hey Harold, how could Comcast increase someone's internet speed in so short a time?" Comcast and other cable operators have a lot of tricks to be able to increase speed and. Some of this has to do with the way we sell internet packages. That when providers lay out the cable and they start selling the packages, they deliberately leave themselves a lot of room to go up because it's very expensive to actually deploy new cable, new technologies. So when they start selling things, they sell them at a relatively low speed and then as demand increases, they keep increasing it. The other thing, of course, is that you have improvements to some of the underlying basic uh, uh, technologies. So cable operators operate on the DOCSIS protocol. There have been technical improvements in that that let them offer faster speeds. Uh, and uh, when they, uh, Comcast or other providers, download new software uh, into the modems and into their routers and upgrade uh, their facilities, um, they are able to uh, offer uh, very fast speeds without having to tear up the, uh, uh, the cables and start over. Now, admittedly, in that case, the real question is, why do they charge so much for those high speeds? But that's a competition question. There isn't enough competition. At J.C. Perino asks, medieval weapon of choice? That is a wonderful question. And i got to tell you, the crossbow. Beautiful, elegant, deadly, the perfect weapon for all of your medieval needs. When you need to get medieval on the ass of some provider, you need a crossbow. And I know what some of you are thinking like, gosh, that is a 125 pound draw crossbow there. That looks really heavy. Well, for those of you who need something a little lighter, let me introduce you to Junior. Junior is a fully operating 30 pound draw pistol crossbow. I have shot targets at over 100 yards with this little baby. What's that, Junior? You think we should go out and hunt us up some more overcharging broadband providers and, you know, show them that America wants real competition and maybe some to puncture those high broadband prices? 
I think that's an excellent idea. 